Hey guys, it's Miss Keenum, and today we're going to talk about how to add fractions with a denominator of 10 and 100. Remember, in our last videos, the four-part fraction video series, we talked about how we could only add fractions that had the same denominator. So we're going to see what we can do when we have a denominator of 10 and a denominator of 100, and we want to add those fractions together. So first, what is a fraction? Remember, a fraction is the pieces or the parts that make a whole. You can see in this first box right here, my fraction is one half because it takes two pieces to make my whole. So what does one represent? This may sound like a silly question, but when we have one, it represents our whole. So as you can see here, I have a whole. Okay. So what does one-tenth represent? One-tenth would represent I have my fraction. It's divided into ten pieces, and I have one of those pieces. Right here you see I have one of the tenths. There are ten pieces. And I have one piece, which means I have one tenth. So what does one one hundredth represent? There are one hundred boxes right here. And I have one of those boxes colored in. So the fraction that I have is one one hundredth. Okay. So once again, what does one represent in each of these boxes? So in the, this first one, the one on the very far left, one represents my whole, and I just have one. I don't have a fraction. In the middle picture, you see where I have a whole that's broken down into tenths. So I have ten rectangles, and so my whole is broken down into tenths. So to show a one out of tenths, this piece that I'm moving right now is a tenth, I have to show that I have 10 of these. Okay, so 10 tenths gives me a whole. See how 10 of the long rectangles, 10 of the tenths equals the exact same thing as this one whole? Okay, so what about in this box over here on the far right? This one has 100 little boxes to make up our whole. So each little square represents a hundredth. So to show that I have one, I will have to have one hundredth one hundredths. So let's show that. Okay, as you can see, I needed one hundredth one hundredth of the little boxes, which each represent a hundredth, to make my whole. So here, this is represented as one over one. This one would be represented as 10 over 10, which equals 1. And remember, 1 over 1 equals 1, because any fraction that has the same number for its numerator, the top number, and its denominator, the bottom number, equals 1. And then finally, this last one would be represented as 100 over 100. And it equals 1 as well. Are you starting to see a relationship between the fractions and maybe how many one hundredths I would need to make a tenth and how many tenths I would need to make a whole? So that's what we're going to continue to look at today. So once again, what does one-tenth represent? One-tenth just represents one of these rectangles. But we can also show one-tenth from our hundredths box. So one-tenth over here would represent, would look like this. Do you see how this looks like the exact same thing? I have one long rectangle and one long rectangle. Each represent a tenth. But when written in my hundreds, 
section, it becomes 10 over 100. But do you see how this colored in section and this colored in section equal one another? They are the same. So 1 tenth equals 10 over 100. So can we express tenths as hundredths and hundredths as tenths? Yes, we can. That's what we just did in that previous problem. But to keep on practicing, we're going to do it again here. So show three tenths. Okay, so now I have my one hundredths section. Each box represents a hundredth. Now the blue section is equal. The part that I have colored in on my tenths and the part that I have colored in in my one hundredths box, they're equal. They're the exact same. Okay, so what does this become? Remember, in this slide, this is three tenths. And we're saying that three tenths is equal to this. So what does this become? To figure that out, I can count each box. Remember, my line is made up of 10 because it's a hundreds chart, we can say. So I have a 10 by 10 structure. So when I count each of the colored in boxes, I come up with 30. So I have 30. But my whole is no longer made up of 10 sections. It's made up of 100 sections or 100 parts. Bottom number becomes 100. So this right here becomes 30 over 100. Right here, it was 3 over 10. But when I move it to my 100s, it becomes 30 100s. So how can we express 6 tenths in hundredths? Okay, so I know that I have 6 tenths. And I know I'm expressing it in 100. So I know I'm already going to have to put my fraction bar in a 100. Okay, so now I'm going to color in the same section to be equal. It becomes 60. I've colored in 60 boxes. So 6 tenths. is the same thing as 60 one hundredths. Do you see that relationship? Do you see how I've really just multiplied my 6 times 10 and my 10 times 10 to get 60 over 100? Okay, let's keep moving. Whoops. Okay, so let's do this one more time. So now I want to express my 80 one hundredths in tenths. Okay, so let's color in the sections in my tenths column that's going to show the same thing as my 80 one hundredths. Colored in eight tenths. So do you see how 80 one hundredths? equals 8 tenths. The difference is in my fraction where when I've colored in my 100s chart, it took 100 boxes to make my whole. But when I color in my tenths chart, it only takes 10 boxes to make the whole. So even though it took 80 boxes in the 100s, that same area is represented by only 8 boxes when it's split into tenths. Notice, we can also just drop our zero. See how I can just drop my zero and that becomes eight tenths? Or back in this problem, you see how I really can just add a zero to give me the same thing when I'm moving between tenths and one hundredths? Just like when we divide and multiply, we can just add or subtract a zero when we're moving from tens to one hundreds. Okay, so now I have another question. My second question asks, 
If we can express tenths as hundredths and hundredths as tenths, can we add the fraction three tenths plus four one hundredths? To learn the answer to this question, please watch the second part of this video.